Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan. Today we're going to be continuing with part 10 of our how to build an LS LM7 5.3 liter V8 series. I have left a link down below in the description to this playlist here on YouTube that you can go watch and I wanted to make it so that way you could watch it start to finish and know exactly how to build an LS just like this one in your garage at home. Before we go any further, I want to mention that we are sponsored by SummitRacing.com. They have been an absolute incredible sponsor to work with, so make sure you buy all your speed parts from summitracing.com. Today's video is going to comprise uh, basically doing our crankshaft positioning sensor, our camshaft positioning sensor, our uh, coolant sender, our oil pressure sender, all the fuel injection stuff to get this thing running, and we're going to put the exhaust manifolds on it. So with all that out of the way, Let's get to work. All right, so today's video is gonna start off with our different assorted sensors. So um, starting on your left, we have our camshaft positioning sensor. There's our AC Delco part number. All of this was sent over by Summit Racing because of course we are sponsored by Summit Racing. Thank you for sending these on over and I will leave links in the description to all of these different senders. This is our uh, coolant temperature sender and I'll open these when we're ready to put them on. This is our oil pressure sender which also needs a special socket, link down below in the description. And this is our crankshaft positioning sensor, also an AC Delco part, again, links down below in the description. And to hold all of them to our engine, we have a fastener kit from ICT. So let's go ahead and start off with our camshaft positioning sensor. And that's what it looks like. And before we install it, I'm gonna put some oil on my fingertips and just apply it lightly to this O-ring. Never put an O-ring in dry. So over here, where our camshaft positioning sensor is gonna go, we'll go ahead and remove that tape I had placed there earlier. Have our camshaft positioning sensor with a nice film of oil on that O-ring. We can just drop that down. Now I wanna say before we go any further too, uh, if you have a stock intake manifold, you have to put this sensor in first because the intake manifold will be in the way. Our aftermarket one uh, alleviates that. Um, so we have that luxury, but that's something to consider if you're reusing your stock intake manifold. And then on this, you don't wanna destroy that O-ring either. Just gently push down on it until it makes that very gratifying clicking sound and line up the bolt hole and place one of our bolts back in there. Then we're gonna grab our 13 millimeter socket and just snug that on down. No real torque spec, just snug is good. All it's doing is holding a sensor in place. So now we can place our oil pressure sender. It's got some uh, thread sealer on there, so don't worry about applying any. Plenty came from the factory. We can just start that with our fingers. Another tip I have for you is never try to tighten this via grabbing the plastic with your fingers. It'll absolutely ruin it. Um, that's why they make those special sockets so it grabs onto the metal uh, fastener nut down here. And grab our special socket and gingerly place that over. And then we can just tighten it down. No real torques back here, just snug is good. Mm. And there we go. So the next thing we can worry about is our uh, coolant sensor port. And that is right here on our driver cylinder head. Now, if you put this cylinder head on the other side, you're probably fine because if you're in a hot rod application, you can just make the wires longer. It's just, it's supposed to go on the driver's side in case you want to use like a stock, stock wiring harness or something like that. And we can replace our coolant temp sender there. And again, I am just using my fingers on the metal to kind of start it, and it doesn't require any kind of sealant. It came with it from the factory. And then we can grab our 19 millimeter socket and fit over it and snug that on down. Again, I don't really have a torque spec for you. Just snug is good. You'll be able to feel it, but don't go crazy. It's in an aluminum head. There we go. So now I'm on the passenger side of the engine and where we're gonna be working right now to put our crankshaft positioning sensor in is right here. So now I have some oil, nice film on my O-ring there. We can go ahead and replace that and just be really, be ginger with it, be gentle. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Just like that, we can replace our bolt. Grabbing our 13 millimeter socket, we're just gonna snug that up. And again, this doesn't need to be crazy Hulk tight. Just snug, all it's doing is holding a sensor in place. And that's perfect, and now we can move on. So now we can move on to some other parts of our throttle body, which is our IAC motor, idler air control valve, and this is basically gonna control how it idles uh, when you're not putting any kind of gas into it. And we have ours made by Edelbrock, sent over by Summit Racing, along with the bolts to make it work. It comes with uh, four bolts and four washers, and we have an AC Delco uh, throttle positioning sensor. This tells the computer where the throttle is um, 
in accordance to mapping fuel delivery. So we can go ahead and install these. So we're gonna replace our throttle positioning sensor and we can see that the shaft is kind of like a D shape where it has this nice flat spot and that flat spot corresponds with the flat spot inside of our sensor. So we just line those up and place it on there and there's no calibration needed or any kind of adjustment you need to make. That's all handled on the computer side. We're gonna grab a three millimeter Allen and just start the first bolt there. I'm using the longer of the two out of our set for the throttle positioning sensor. We can just snug those up as evenly as we can. And there we go. So now we can replace our IAC and I've lubricated the O-ring down here and you want to place it in so the sensor is facing downward so no water or other material can get in there. Place it in like that and just hold on to it because it's gonna want to flop out. So now I'm gonna grab our three millimeter Allen and just start one of them and go to the other one. We're gonna tighten these down as evenly as possible just like everything else we've ever done. We're just going to snug those up just like that. Absolutely perfect. So this IAC controls uh, idle when your throttle positioning is at zero. So it's really important that this functions that way your engine will idle. So the next thing we're going to go on to is our fuel delivery. And how we're going to accomplish that is with these DW fuel injectors. These are a high performance fuel injector. You could get away with using uh, stock, but for a performance application such as this, you would want a more powerful fuel injector to let more fuel in and make more power. These, of course, were sent over by our awesome sponsor, Summit Racing. Link down below to these exact fuel injectors are in the description. And then we need a way for the fuel to get to the injector. So we have this. It's a Summit Racing made part. It is our fuel rail system so our fuel injectors are going to go in here and then on to our intake manifold and we'll show you how to build all of this to make it totally killer for this engine. Before we put any injectors in though make sure that the inside of here is all nice and clean you could uh, put some carburetor spray in there and maybe some compressed air and hit it from one side or the other and just make sure there's no little metal chips in there this would be a bad place for them to be. So I've pre-assembled uh, these fuel rails just a little bit. I put these uh, mounts in. They're just uh, kind of finger tight right now so I can adjust them later if I need to, you know, move the bracketry to, you know, finagle it in place. So what we can do is take one of our absolutely fantastic fuel injectors and the assembly lube that actually came with them. If you don't have assembly lube or if you're using stock, um, some engine oil will work just fine but not too much, don't get engine oil in the injector. What you wanna do, this is the top of our uh, fuel injector and we're going to go ahead and just apply some lube there. You don't need a crazy, crazy amount, just enough. And you can wipe that around with your finger. Try not to get it inside the injector itself. So when you're installing these injectors, um, don't just try to go straight in with them. Try to kind of walk them in, um, cause you want to maintain the integrity of the O-ring. And for this, we want the connector to face outward. A good way to look at it is just where these, you know, bolt heads are. Now when, when we're installing the injector, just try to walk it in. Just like that, absolutely perfect. And just do that seven more times. So with all our fuel injectors in our fuel rail, we can go ahead and give these O-rings the exact same treatment we did on the top O-rings, because you never put O-rings in dry, and that applies to every O-ring you're gonna run into. There we go, nice lubricate. We can do that for all four on this fuel rail and then it's ready for installation. So what's kind of cool about these fuel injectors is they've already been tested by DW and you can see that this injector has 34 written on it. it. Might be a little tough to see, but it does, it says 34. So on our chart here, number 34 at 100% does 449 uh, cc's a minute at three bar. So all these injectors have been tested by DW. So now we can remove our protective tape. And we can place our fuel rail down on our wells. Lightly put it on right now. And what you want to do is put even pressure on it and just go straight down. <clears throat> Might fight you a little bit, but eventually goes down and it looks great. So now we can grab our four millimeter. I'm going to use my T handle here. It's a little more convenient. We're going to line up these brackets with the bolt holes and I'm just going to put these in loose for right this second. So everything's nice and loose, just so I can get all the bolts in. There we go, once I get to this point, everything's still kind of loose, but I'm gonna go from the middle first, 
and I'm just going to go in some stages. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and snug these down. No real torque spec for you, but this T handle is just the perfect amount of torque if you ask me. Now that our mounting brackets are snug, what we can do is tighten up our nut and bolt combinations for each one. And we know it's installed perfectly. So just do that for the other side as well. It's exactly the same. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is our fuel line crossover. This is gonna link our fuel rails together. So that way you don't have to run two lines to do different things, that'd be a mess. So this is the way it's gonna work is this crossover. You can set it up what's called a deadhead style and you can put a plug in one of the ends so it's regulated at the fuel pump. However, the better way to go according to most fuel pump manufacturers is to use two fittings, uh, one on each side of the fuel rails. So that'll send and return gas at a metered rate. It's usually the better way to go, but it's a little bit more work. And uh, I think it's the better way to go. Usually things that are worth more are worth the work. So that's something to consider as well. The really cool thing about this system is that it's completely customizable. You can have the fuel feed in at the rear of the engine or at the front in one corner or the other, or you can mix them up. It doesn't really matter as long as you have this crossover on correctly, you should be good to go. So now we're going to place on the driver front side of our fuel rail our dash 10 to dash 6 fitting. And I have lubricated the o-ring here with some of that uh, assembly lube that came with our fuel injectors. You could also use uh, engine oil. And I'm just going to snug that up with my dash 10 wrench. Alternatively, you could, uh, you know, wrap your one inch jaws for your one inch wrench with like tape or something so you don't damage this because it is an aluminum fitting and you just want to snug it up just like that perfect now we can put uh, the same thing on the other side on the passenger it's exactly the same side and then we can put our fuel crossover on so now we can put on our fuel rail crossover i've already blown this out with some compressed air just to make sure there's nothing in there we don't want and we can just put that dash six fitting on there, just like that. So no, I have both sides attached to the fuel rail, just finger tight like this. So this is the same on the other side. And now we can just tighten it up and I'm gonna tighten it up uh, evenly as I can with my dash six wrench. And I'm doing that so one side doesn't get a length advantage over the other. So everything's nice and square. Here we go. I'm just gonna snug that up. Doesn't need to be crazy hold tight. It's just dash six, you know, don't go crazy. There we go, that's perfect. Do that for both sides and we can move on. So now we can put our rear fittings in, those dash 10 to dash six fittings. Very easy. Grab our dash 10 and wrench. There we go, we can do that for both sides. And I have, of course, already lubricated our O-rings here, so don't worry about that and I'm gonna run it with the send send and return lines pre-installed. You could run it with just a plug here, um, and that would be good if you had a, a deadhead system, just like I said earlier, but that's gonna vary application application. The stock application uh, is just like this, where a fuel's gonna come in here and it can return via here. And there we go. So before we move on to uh, spark plugs or ignition coils or anything like that, we're gonna put all that on in one big chunk. What we're gonna do is put on our headers because we don't want our headers to you know, accidentally tap our spark plugs and it might crack the porcelain and then might cause a misfire that you know, we're not really aware of. We wanna avoid that entirely. So we're gonna go ahead and put our headers on now. These were sent over by Summit Racing because of course we are sponsored by them. They are part number SUM-G9021, link down below in the description as always. Uh, I'm super excited to put these on. These uh, they look like a stock replacement header for like a truck. These would replace like a stock manifold type header set up. So you have shorty tube headers instead of, uh, you know, a, a manifold. So these would perform a little bit better. I'm very excited to put these on our engine and they're going to work for great for us on the dyno. They also come with a set of gaskets, which is super cool. And it also comes with our fastener set. So these are good to go to put on the motor. All right, before we put our uh, headers on, we can go ahead and remove our tape again. Sha -sha -sha! So I'm holding our gasket in place, making sure it's not getting displaced, and I've got a bolt preloaded on the left side. So we can kind of lay that down where it's going to go, and it's home there. And I'm just going to put these on finger tight for right now. That way I can kind of move it a little bit to install our other bolts. 
before I torque them down, I'm just going to snug them up a little bit with my 10 millimeter. And we're going to do a, you know, spiral pattern, middle out. Now I can grab my torque wrench. So now I got my torque wrench set to 11 foot pounds for our first pass. We're just going to do middle out. And then our second pass is going to be 18. And we're just going to repeat that process. There we go, our header's installed, but before we go anywhere, I want to mention that this header is going to become loose as you heat up and cool down your engine. So maybe check over these after the engine's been running for a little bit while, so that way you don't uh, ruin this uh, nice gasket here. And you might also notice that I'm going to need a little bit of touch-up paint just there, but that's okay. I'd rather have need a little bit more touch-up paint than uh, have too much in between the uh, header and the head. And the cool thing about headers, just like the fuel injection system we set up, the passenger side is exactly the same, so just do the exact same thing. So that is how to put all the necessary sensors, your fuel injection system, and your exhaust manifolds on an LM7 5.3 liter V8. I hope I've earned your subscription here on YouTube today. I do uh, build engine build videos like this. I also do general automotive repair and how-to tutorials, but everything is as thorough as this series is because that's the way I like to make content. We're gonna keep building this 5.3 liter. We already did a big block build video that is running in our 1967 Camaro. I've put a link down below in the description to that series as well and that is done in the same format as this except, except it's an old school big block instead of a more modern LS. So you can see a couple differences there but there is a lot of crossover. Thanks again for watching. Thank you Summit Racing for sponsoring this video. I hope I see you next time.